Hello. In this video, I would like to talk about industrial heritage and the ways of its protection. Industrial revolution brought many innovations, objects and processes. They are of universal, human and historical value. And it is task for all of us to preserve them. What is industrial heritage? What everything belongs to it? What would you say? What, how would you define uh, the industrial heritage? The definition in the Charter of the Indus International Committee for the Conservation of the Industrial Heritage describes industrial heritage as remains of buildings and machinery, mills and factories, mines and sites for processing and refining, places where energy is generated, transmitted and used, also transport and all its infrastructure and many others. How would you preserve the uh, industrial heritage? What would you do to keep it, to preserve it? As you know, there are different, or you can imagine there are different levels of intervention to conserve something, to conserve also the heritage. Minimum or soft intervention are different lists of heritage on international, national or regional levels. We will talk about, about these steps later, about this intervention. Uh, for example, it is UNESCO, UNESCO list of heritage. Another important, another important organization or platform for international support in cooperation to the benefit of industrial sites, I would like to mention the International Committee for the Conservation of the Industrial Heritage. It is an organization their goals are to promote the international uh, cooperation, preserving, conserving, investigating, and advancing education, advancing education of the industrial heritage. The organization also supports international cooperation of people in safeguarding, conserving and researching all aspects of the international heritage in the world. And it is also a special advisor to ICOMOS. We have already mentioned this organization and we will talk about it also in some other videos. ICOMOS on industrial heritage. Uh, which is just, just to remember, international organization dedicated to the conservation of the world's monuments and sites. A second, I would like to mention, or then as next, I would like to mention a network, the European route of industrial heritage. It is a tourist route of industrial heritage sites across Europe. Its aim is to raise interest for the European industrial heritage, which is the first step to protect something valuable and uh, quite, can be quite effective. We will see this in, in, in the next videos in some examples. The European route also wants to promote regions, towns and sites, showing the industrial heritage, uh, industrial heritage and history and market them as visitors' attractions. The system of routes uh, of this uh, European route of industrial heritage is organized in regional routes. 
for example, we, as we can see, regional routes in Austria, regional routes in Germany, or European team routes with 14 different industrial teams like mining, application of power, communication, production and manufacturing, and etc. There are many, uh, at least 14. As a tourist, you can select your own criteria and follow the routes according to the particular team or region you are interested in. And uh, in this way, you can virtually and later also physically, when you want, visit some of the best uh, of Europe's industrial heritage attractions. We have mentioned let's say, administrative level of conservation and protection. On the physical level, the value of industrial heritage depends on their functionality. The prior step to protect them should be to maintain them and keep them functional for its, for its original use. The authenticity of industrial heritage is used, is re, sorry, is reduced when uh, components or important elements are missing. So let's look on the picture and uh, repeat. The first important step is keeping the functionality for the original use. This is the most valu valuable uh, thing we can do. Another case is when uh, the object cons or construction works, functio its functionality is here. However, it can't be used any longer. For example, when there were found more efficient resources in the other regions or uh, in the other, other regions of the world, uh, or production of factories, efficient resources in the other regions, or factories and companies was, were no longer economically viable and they were closed or the next, the physical, hard physical work was replaced by machines and innovations or also for demographic reasons. Creative, attractive, sustainable and also very ecologic solution can be recycling, conversion, transformation or adaptive reuse. Industrial buildings such as train station, power plant, factory can be reused for a purpose other than which they were originally built or designed for. Often we can find conversions into galleries, museums, cafes, business centers, offices, etc. What significant advan advantages would you see would you see of this form of heritage conservation, I mean the recycling, adaptive reuse. In case of adaptive reuse, it is not only rehabilitation of cultural, technical or other values. Of course, it is quite important part of, of this form of conservation, but Another important uh, moment is reuse of building materials and it can be an attractive alternative in terms of circular economy and ecology and sustainable development of cities. According to or talking about uh, adaptive reuse, about the transformation, we can often hear professionals 
that new build is always more economical or is usually more economical and renovation is usually more expensive. The economic costs can differ from project to project. In our next videos, we will talk about other forms of involvement, involvement with, uh, with the adaptive reuse projects. And, and also it can be volunteering as a very helpful form of economical approach. As the next advantage, uh, as a positive side of a transformation or adaptive reuse, is that we can reduce the building materials, resources, energy needed for new constructions. We save costs on new materials. We save costs on demoli demolition of the old building when we decide to, to build a new one. And uh, we save also labor. And there are many, many other factors. It depends on the, on the project. Uh, adaptive reuse can bring also sustainable regeneration and re revitalization of abandoned areas. And uh, it can mean also economic development, especially in less prosperous regions, creating new jobs when we give to the old industrial heritage the new use. It can generate also prosperous community. It, it can support innovative and creative society. Understanding of industrial heritage often prefers the large the good, the beautiful, old, conforming, uh, cons consensual, and many other, uh, many other factors. Adaptive reuse as a method can help to make, to create from a not comforting and beautiful place in relaxing, uh, a relaxing area and uh, due to this, the negative impression from the, from the old industrial heritage or site can be changed as it is the, for example, case in uh, Landschaftspark Duisburg Nord, it's on the picture, where in Germany, where a polluted and uh, landscape disturbing coal and steel plant has been converted to a relaxing and interesting site. About this case and about, uh, other, about the other cases and more about adaptive reuse, about their, uh, its advantages, we will talk in the next videos.